Hey everyone, welcome back to Susan's Sunday Spotlight. If you've been following along, you know that every single week I am bringing you a new game that you can take into your classroom and use right away. This week's game is the same. I will be teaching you a math warm up called Make 11. Because this is a really quick math warm up, it's only a few minutes long, I would like to show you a few other ones that you can use in your classroom as well that have always been class favorites. So let's get started. <laughs> As always, if you're liking these videos, please make sure you give them a thumbs up and make sure you hit subscribe and click the bell. That way you're notified every single week of my new video. If you've been following along with my blog or my teaching journey over the past few years, you will know that I love the workshop model. So I use math workshop, reading workshop, and writer's workshop in my first grade classroom. Um, and I just love the setup of it. It just is what works best for me and my students. And it's really where I find I get the most time to spend in small groups with my students for each of those subjects. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a layout here, insert here, of um, what math workshop looks like in my classroom. And the part that we're talking about today is that warm up, which is only three to five minutes at the beginning of every lesson. So there's a few different reasons I like to use a math warm up. Number one, they are fast and they get students' brains just activated before um, we start our learning. When I do a math warm up, I do it for a few reasons. I usually like to either review an old skill that we are learning so it keeps spiraling throughout the year. Sometimes I like to throw a brand new skill at them just so I can kind of gauge where they're at with it before we dive in. And I also love this because it's a great way for students to explain their thinking. And a lot of times I'm actually like probing them to go a little deeper with their explanation. Um, instead of just telling me the answer to the problem, I really want them to explain how they got there so we can talk about it and realize that students have different ways of getting there. So here are a few of my favorite warm-ups. One of my favorite warm-ups is actually Buzz. I talked about this uh, whole group circle game, I think in week three of Susan Sunday Spotlight. So I will have, the, there should be like a little eye either up here or up here that you can watch that video. I'll also link it down below so I won't explain it in this video, but it's a very simple game. It only takes about two to four minutes and it's a whole group counting game. So I'll link that so you can see that that's one of my favorites. Another one I like is mix and match, and you can do this with very simple index cards, and there's so many different ways you can play based on whatever you're working on. So all that happens in mix and match is that students receive an index card, they mix around the room, and they have to find their match. So for instance, like for number sense, you could have five dots, and the student with the five dots would have to mix around the classroom and find the student with the numeral five. A few other ways are with addition and subtraction problems. So you could write some addition equations and students have to find the sum. They mix around the room, match. I usually do this a few times, so I'll have students, when they're done, I'll collect all the cards, shuffle them up, and pass them out again. Here's a place value one that would be a little trickier towards the end of the year, just to give you some ideas on using these cards. Um, I would usually have something like this, so four tens and two of them are crossed out, and students would have to find the um, two-digit subtraction equation, so 40 minus 20. On to make 11, which is the game of the week. This one is a partner game where students basically stand up and they spread around the room with their partner, and they have to put both hands behind their back. So their hands are behind their back, and I will usually set a timer for between one to two minutes. Um, you can kind of gauge how your students do with it to see how long you want them to have it. And their goal is on the count of three, and they'll do this by themselves, I don't count out for them. So they'll say one, two, three and then they'll throw out any fingers between one and 10 to their partner. And their goal is to try to make 11. So it's a fast paced game and they're not allowed to talk during it. So they can't make up any sort of scheme or plan to try to make 11 on their own first. They just go ahead and put their hands behind their back. One, two, three. One person might put out four, the other might put out seven. They have to quickly look down and they try to figure out if they've made 11. Um, I like this game throughout the entire year. At the beginning of the year, they're usually counting one by one to see if they've made 11. But as the year goes on, it's really cool to see their number sense building and see, oh, I have four, or you have 10, and I have one, I have four, you have seven, and just see those different combinations um, to practice their addition skills. So yeah, students will just simply see how many times they can make 11, if they can at all, during that timer that you've set. And like I said, it just gets students up, mixed around the room, they're kind of in their own little area. And like I said, it's really fast paced, so they love to play it. That's it for Make 11. Like I said, it was really quick, so I wanted to share a few other ones. There's one more I want to share, and these are called Fix It Problems. Fix It cards are some of my favorite ways to promote higher order thinking in the classroom. And all I do for Fix It cards is I will go ahead and write a problem on the board, or I'll display it under the projector and I will write an entire equation. So I might say six plus four equals nine. 
and students will have to figure out what's wrong and fix it. And with a problem like that, 6 plus 4 equals 9, there's a few different ways they could fix it, which is what we like to talk about. Right away, students will go to that 9 and say, that's not correct, it's, the answer is 10. And I'm like, yes, you're right, that is one way to fix it. But then students might say, wait a second, what if we change the 4 to a 3? That would also be another way to fix the problem. Or change the 6. So there's all different ways they can do that. A few years ago, I went ahead and made a bunch of different cards. These are all for math. Um, but for each topic that we go over in first grade. So like here's an example of a subtraction one. So it says the crown used to have 12 jewels. Now it has nine. That means five jewels must have fallen off. And so I would display something like this at the beginning of the class as a warm up and students would really have to think about it for a while first. Then they might talk to a partner before they go ahead and voice their answers. And these are the ones that I really like to figure out um, their thinking behind it. So I will usually not tell them if they are correct or incorrect right away. I like to have them walk through that process and explain exactly how they got to their answer. For number sense, I usually have a lot of in and out boxes. So students, these ones take a while. Students will need to figure out what the rule is and also figure out where the problem was. It's, a, it's like one step above a regular in and out box where they just have to solve what's missing. They have to look at all of these and figure out which one's wrong first before they can solve it. And then just an example of a place value one, one more than 43 equals 45. And again, a lot of these have more than one way that they can solve the answer. So most people will go here and say this is 43, one more than 43 is actually 44, that should be 44. But they also could say, wait a sec, what if you just said two more than? And so those are the kinds of things that I'm guiding them towards during these conversations. So I will link these below, but I want to show you a few in case you wanted to make your own. Really, all you have to do is whatever subject you're working on or whatever topic rather, you can just go ahead and make a problem wrong and just write it on the board and students can try to figure out how to fix it. But if you are interested in these, I will link them below just so you can take a look. That's all I have for you this week. I hope you enjoy some of those math warm-ups. I was wondering, do you use math warm-ups in your classroom? Um, and if so, what are some of your favorite? I'd love to hear them down below in the comments. So go ahead and share those with me. And I will see you again next week. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye. Also, I'm pretty sure the light is going crazy. It's like I have a window over there, and the sun is just going behind the clouds, and then in front of the clouds is driving me nuts. But... I hope it doesn't look too crazy. We'll have to see.